Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. October 17th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. There's a civil war going on in America. Welcome back to the program. A couple of years ago, I published a book, or I wrote a book that was published by my current great publisher, Hachette, and it was entitled Stop the Coming Civil War. The publisher thought it was a little too strong in title. They tried to diminish the word civil war, and I said, I'm not writing, I'm not publishing the book without it, because this country is in a civil war right now. It's sort of a non-shooting war, but it's a civil war. Right now, we're past the non-shooting part of the civil war. We're in it. The left is using street thugs to conduct their violence and their terror. You know who they are. Do I have to mention the names of the street thugs? You know those good folks who pretend that they're victims, who shoot police dead in the streets and then say that the uh, uh, the shooters are the victims? You know the good folks in the ACLU who defend the most vicious illegal alien criminal as though they're more pure than your grandfather who may have uh, fought in World War II? You know the type I'm talking about. Or the Hawaiian judge who just blocked Trump's new travel ban. You know who I'm talking about. These are not nice people. These are not, quote, progressives. These are hardcore revolutionaries at war with America and at war with our survival, in my humble opinion. Welcome to hour number three. Do you think Vegas and the fires that are breaking out in California are terrorism? If so, what are you doing to protect yourself and your family? Now, I started the show two hours ago with the Savage Academy Awards. I thought it was clever, you know, had fun. But it fell on deaf ears. People don't actually laugh at real comedy. When you see late-night television, fake comics who are really just fronts for the government media complex, and you hear laughter, it's not laughter, it's a laugh track. But you see, no one can talk about the, the stuff they're talking about. Well, we can talk about this stuff, can't we? So again, we have one open line, 855-407-282. Maybe I should go back to the award show intro for a minute, or go back to Tara. Which do you prefer? Oh, let's take a call first. Sherry on KSFO Line 6, go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. It's a pleasure getting to talk with you for the first time, caller. Um, I was just hearing about Sonoma and Maxwell, and I actually went to Sonoma High. And the Maxwell Park is located inside of the town of Sonoma. Um, I wanted to speak about possibly how this arsonist, or maybe arsonist, will probably get off. I had a very good friend very well-known teenage kid back when we were in high school. He was uh, walking down Arnold Drive. This illegal came from behind and hit him, murdered him, ran for three days. He got off with six months. And that's the last. Wait, he, 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 he killed another kid in cold blood, then they released him? Absolutely they did. Yeah. Why? Uh, On what basis? That he was an innocent victim? <laughs> Or he probably, well, they did say he was very nice when they finally caught him. That oh, well, you see, that counts, Sherry. He was not, a, he was not an evil right-wing ranter. So even though he may have committed a murder, he met all of the protocols of the elders of California, and as a result, they had to release him because he seemed nice. He seemed nice. And, on, I mean, even the front of his car had blood from my friend, Kyle. Oh, you mean he ran him over? Oh, oh, you mean one of those kind of, uh, you mean a drunk driving illegal? You mean one of those? Oh, I don't see why not. It was the middle of the day. It's always 5 o'clock in Mexico. Ah, uh, well, it's a national sport in some parts of the world. There you go. <laughs> well, how do you actually survive in Sonoma County, being that you are surrounded by so many sick, ment mentally ill people? I moved. <laughs> Sherry, let me tell you something. People don't know how sick California really is. They think they know. But there used to be a... There was a movie years ago called The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. 
if you walk around in most places in California, it's as though the invasion of the body snatchers has actually occurred. They are like pod people. There's no human reaction with them. They look sane. They sound sane. But if you look in the eyes, there's nothing in there. You can see the, light, the lights are on, but nobody is home. And that's most of San Francisco. I was in there Saturday with my dog. There was human fecal matter in the street. People stepped over it. There were dead rats. People didn't notice it. There were bums that were harassing girls. No one said a word. The streets stink of human waste. The sewers are overflowing with garbage. The benches are dirty. There's a hepatitis outbreak in California. And Governor Moonbeam makes believe there's every, nothing's wrong except global warming and Donald Trump. Thank you for the call. Okay, we know that the arsonist who was arrested, who happens to be an illegal alien, may not have caused all the fires. We don't know that. It was just that man with one little fire. There's another one came in. I, I can't read it to you. I'm not going to read it to you. That's I'll let it go. Just I'll leave it to the authorities. Let's leave it to the authorities. How did I open my show? I said that my cynicism is still intact. Remember I said that to you? When I read that the Senate reached a deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump opposed last week, but now he now supports, I said my cynicism is still intact. And then I read to you from the jacket copy of Trump's war. One paragraph, don't get nervous. Here's what I said. I posited a question. The wall, taxes, tariffs, deportations, Obamacare, guns, military strength, schools, abortion, religion. What will the new president do? Hmm. <laughs> Mm, that was back in the January. Well, now we're into what month is this already? October. Here we are coming around to the pagan holiday of Halloween. You see all the houses with fake cobwebs on them. The same people who wouldn't be caught dead in a church or caught dead with a Bible in their house or caught dead with any reference to religion are really yucking it up with cobwebs and goblins outside their houses over here in the Northern California. Nothing wrong with that. After all, it's an innocent holiday, isn't it? Well, they're kind of innocent, but it really isn't. Halloween is a pagan devil worship holiday. It just shows you how the country melted down a long time ago. L long before Hussein Obama came along, the illegitimate left had already destroyed most of America's social fabric. But let's get back to uh, brass tacks here. Fires. Are they terror? We were... We read to your report yesterday that the fires in Spain and Portugal were known to be started by ISIS. So why would you um, so-called progressives rule out terror in this country? Tell me why. Why? What makes you rule it out? Because it doesn't fit your agenda? Let me ask the question again. If we had reports from Spain and Portugal yesterday that massive forest fires that were set in their in their forests, were set by illegal aliens, or, or let's say Islamo-fascists. Let's make it simple. You know what an Islamo-fascist is, don't you? You haven't figured that one out yet? Let me say it again. Islamo-fascist. They started the fires in Spain and Portugal because they were told to do so by their uh, bosses who take their Bible literally. And their Bible says, if you see an infidel, cut his throat. Now, admittedly, most practitioners of that particular uh, belief system don't do that but some do and an awful lot of them do and even if it's only 0.1% of 1.2 billion people well you do the math and there's an awful lot of them here because Obama opened the floodgates to them and we don't know how many of the 0.2% are listening to this show or how many of the 0.2% are in your neighborhood or how many of the 0.2% may have set the fires or how many of the 0.2% may have been responsible for the Vegas shooting or how many of the 0.2% may be poisoning our food tomorrow and we'll be told by Governor Brown that it's all global warming. Because we know the authorities are defunct in this country. The authorities are non-existent. If you look to the government to save you, uh, you really shouldn't look to the government to save you because they're just people. And most people who go into government are not really the best and the brightest. Let's put it to you this way. They're not the A-listers of the brain. Most people who go into government may be good people, but they're not the A-listers of the mind. So don't look to them to save you. You better look to your own brain. So what does your brain tell you? Do you think Vegas and the fires are related? Do you think Vegas and the fires are terrorism? Have you gone back to normal now in your life because everything's fine? Everything's under control. 
because the government told you to forget it by looking at the Harvey Weinstein sewer pipe? The same man who was responsible for most of the filth coming through the sewer pipe has now become the subject uh, of the movie that he has written about himself. He's starring in his own movie, and now those who own the government media complex, the movies, the television, the radio business by and large, actually radio is not part of the, it's very interesting, the radio industry is not owned by the same people who own the movie and, and uh, uh, print business. Did you know that? That's a really odd statement. How come some of those Molochs haven't bought the radio companies yet? They own the movie industry. They own the news industry. How could they not buy the radio industry? We actually stand apart in talk radio. Did you know that? And amongst those of us who stand apart in the news in the, in the radio business, there are a few of us who actually say what we see. You know why? Because we're stupid, right? We say what we see because we're really dumb. Even if we're right, we shouldn't say it. Why? Because it upsets the social order. And if you really live in a dictatorship, you don't upset the social order. Uh, because, well, you want people to watch people who make $16 million a year spit on the American flag because they're victims, and you don't find that preposterous, and you're so stupid, you continue to put your hat on backwards like the big moron your wife says you are, and watch the idiots on Sunday when you have the power to click it off and destroy their ratings. No, your wife is right. You're a moron. You're a bigger moron than your wife thinks. You still watch the games when the morons spit on your flag? You still worse go to the ball games like a big idiot after they've told you you should drop dead and that they'd like to see the country disappear? Well, then you're a bigger idiot than they are because you have the power to destroy the NFL. You have the power to destroy the sports industry until they get in line like everybody else and understand that without this great nation, those morons would not be making 16 to $30 million a year. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You have the power. You're the consumer. I'm running out of time. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Well, here we are. We're back to the conspiracy theories that are raging all over the Internet, and maybe you don't believe them because, well, you don't go on the Internet. You get your news from a newspaper, and you read the newspaper from left to right like it's the Holy Grail. I see people to this day sitting in cafes, older people mainly, and they use the finger, and they go down line by line. Feinstein says illegal aliens are not criminals. Feinstein says people who accuse illegals of using welfare are bad people. Feinstein says fires set by global warming. Feinstein says nothing about Vegas because there's nothing to say. Feinstein says although she's not old, she is not old, she is not old, she is not old, she's going to run again. Feinstein says, a Brown says this, evil right-wingers say that, white males are no good, page two. Page two of the local newspaper in San Francisco, white males are bad, global warming is caused by white males. Uh, illegal aliens are not illegal. Um, no one is illegal. Everyone's invited. All welcome. Refugees welcome. Page three. They read it left to right. Holy Grail. Bible. Chapter and verse. Well, maybe you're one of those people. And you're just tuning into the Savage Nation because you heard that I'm a clown. Oh, yeah, 22, 23 years on the radio, but I'm a clown. And the audience of about, I would say, 20 million people, given that I'm the number one streaming show in the nation that is in talk radio, uh, they're all fools. After all, just ask Rob Reiner or Robert De Niro. He knows everything. At least that's what they pretend to, to do in, in their movies, don't they? And they know that everyone who listens to this show without exception is an uneducated right-wing dolt. I'm sure Harvey Weinstein believed that until now. Isn't that odd that Harvey Weinstein, one of the chief manufacturers of the filth that comes out of the sewer pipe of Hollywood, it's not bad enough, the garbage he produced. Now we have to listen to the garbage ma maker himself and his life and instead not focusing on the real problems of this nation. Isn't it odd that the man who made the filth is now the subject of the American mind uh, and we're not focused on the real stories, such as where are the autopsies of the shooting victims in Las Vegas? Why have none of them been uh, produced? Uh, who actually, or excuse me, not who actually, we can't go there. How did the former 
Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, die suspiciously in a, in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border, and there was no autopsy performed. How is that even possible when any bum who dies in the streets by law must have an autopsy uh, performed? Why was there no question about that? Oh, I'm sorry, because the Dan Rathers of our time were told by the bosses who run them, who pay them 6 to $7 million a year, to not go there. That's even if their, their brains could go there. Oh, and Antifa, remember them? The nice folks who attack police, horses, buildings, and things like that. Remember them? Who beat up reporters? Where'd they go? Have they moved up to Sonoma and Marin with a box of matches? Where'd they suddenly disappear to now they got through beating people up in Berkeley? Do they move their camps up to the hills of Sonoma and, Mar and Napa? How would we know? They're terrorists. We know that. That's why we, the people who do not read the newspapers left to right like chapter and verse in the Bible, are asking these questions. We may never get the answers, but we don't watch Jimmy Kimmel. We never really believed in Robert De Niro as a person. We loved him as an actor. We never thought Eminem was really a brilliant guy. We never thought Ben Affleck was a particularly intelligent man. We never thought Jane Fonda was anything but an anti-American backstabbing witch. So we're not fooled, and we're not surprised by these times. The only question is this. When the hell will this end? When the hell is this terror campaign in America going to come to an end? And moreover, where is Trump? Why is he so quiet and silent on the fires? I mean, the liberals said, where is he? They're right in a way. He was there in Houston, wasn't he? He was there in Florida. He was there with the uh, Puerto, Rico, Puerto, Rican people, Puerto Rican people. Threw him a paper towel. Why has he not come here? Well, you could say because they hate him. Well, he may him liberal, yes. Liberal central, yes. Even if he came, they'd say he didn't do enough. So he figures don't even go there. Don't go into the heart of the monster. But he should be addressing the potential links to suspicious causes, don't you think? Let's go back to Vegas. Why did the president say almost nothing about Las Vegas? When ISIS itself claimed responsibility, why did he say nothing? Well, there's a possible answer to that as well which is now becoming a trademark of the Savage Nation. And, of course, the possible answer to, them, answer to that as well is because if it was shown to be connected to terrorism, why that it would mean, then it would mean that the great law and order president has failed us. It would mean that the DHS that we thought was better than under Obama has failed us. It would mean the FBI that we thought was going to change has failed us. You see how it works? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Here's a little story to show you why my cynicism is intact. Came to me from the Washington Post. Senators reach bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies. What? Senators reach bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump ended. Wait, and here's the kicker. And President voices support. Senators reach bipartisan deal to fund health care subsidies that Trump ended and President voices support. So he ended the subsidies and now he supports them. It was unclear whether Senate GOP leaders would embrace the proposal, leaving its long-term prospects in doubt. So yesterday, since we're all into the Harvey Weinstein thing, I uh, asked male actors to call if they were victims of predatory behavior on the way up now hold on now you know that there's is wait, let, let's you know we have it all wrong we're all you know, like now they're all coming out of the woodwork now reese uh silver spoon said she was molested at 16 i have no reason to doubt her they're all coming out of the woodwork even 80 year old actresses are saying they were molested to get where they are kind of it's a little late now for jane fonda but okay better late than never she had to get in on the act and get another 10 seconds of fame nimrod who was nimrod Nimrod is a biblical figure described as a king of Assyria. According to the book of Genesis and books of Chronicles, the son of Cush, therefore the great-grandson of Noah. The Bible states that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord and began to be mighty in the earth. Extra-biblical traditions associating him with the Tower of Babel led his, to his reputation as a king who was rebellious against God. That's very, very intriguing rebellious against god hmm. well okay we'll let that go for now uh let's here's the next 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 story i'm tongue-tied already from this bob weinstein accused of sexual harassment uh, are you joking 
I can't believe that the Weinstein brothers, not different than Harvey. Come on. I mean, they started in Queens together, but wasn't one Kane or one Abel? A female showrunner who worked on the Weinstein drama The Mist has accused Bob, Bob Weinstein of sexual harassment during the production of the Spike TV series. Oh, God. Amanda Siegel blah, 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 said Weinstein repeatedly a romantic overture star and asked her to join him for private dinner. Blah, blah, blah. No would be in the blah, blah, blah. A representative for Bob Wein, blah, 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 Oh, please. You know, it's so boring at this point. They're all trying to get in on the act. The news is so depressing. The country is is in such a, such a gr grave state of shock. The only thing good is the stock market, and I don't have a dollar invested. I don't know about you. I'm not an investor because I know the system is gamed. I believe the stock market is as rigged as the Academy Awards are, and only the insiders get what they get. And it's done for favors, as we well know. So I have no money in the stock market. Uh, to my loss, I know that. People have made fortune upon fortunes in the last uh, year since Trump, uh, almost a year now since Trump became president. The market's booming. Good luck to that one. But you know, my friends, everything that goes up must come down. It's inevitable. It will crash. No one knows when. People keep throwing money at the wheel of fortune called Wall Street, hoping they're the last ones, not the last ones in. And I certainly don't want to be the last one in because I'll tell you right now, those who control the game are the ones who are going to control the game. They'll sell short while you've gone long, and you'll wind up with the short end of the stick. And so if you're in the market and making money, I'm happy for you. But all I can say is everything that goes up must come down. So where does that leave us today? Where does it leave us when we don't know which way to turn? A lot of people I know are very upset with the state of affairs. They're terrified there's going to be a nuclear war. They don't understand why fires keep breaking out in California. And strangely enough, another one last night at, again, 10 p.m., that Big Ten came up again, where fires spontaneously ignited in the Santa Cruz Mountains um, around San Francisco. For those of you who don't know where that is, it is south of San Francisco. So we've been encapsulated here or triangulated, if you want, uh, fires in the north in Sonoma, Napa, now in the south, Santa Cruz. Yeah, well, they're spontaneous, as you well know, but you wouldn't know it from ABC, CBS, or NBC. Maybe they have money in the Napa Valley wineries, and they don't want you to know about it. I don't know the real reason here, but things are not looking too good. The FBI and the Las Vegas Police Department keep changing their story. The sheriff who gives his uh, delivery on what happened changes the timeline and then increasingly looks like he's freaking out and sweating. The whole world looks at this, including people who were escapees of the Vegas massacre, who are reporting different stories, and the government is reporting. The people are frightened. They feel everything is out of control, and they really don't know who's running things. And, uh, you know, it comes back again to the president. There's an article that makes you scared. Uh, Satanic-looking drag queen with horns reads to little kids at Michelle Obama Public Library. This, I almost dropped, dropped the microphone when I saw this. Gateway pundit Christine Taylor. The Michelle Obama Public Library in Long Beach, California, hosted a satanic-looking drag queen on Saturday who read books to young children as part of the library celebration of LGBTQ History Month. The shocking photo of a man dressed as a female demon, not just a woman, but a demon with giant horns in his head, reading to little children at a public library was posted to Twitter and Facebook by the Long Beach Library but taken down after a huge outpouring of critical replies, including from GOP congressional candidate Omar Navarro. It also got the approval of the Church of Satan. You can read it and see the picture and see how degenerated the nation is by going to my website, michaelsavage.com. Here's a good story, I guess. Uh, Trump plans massive increase in federal immigration jails. That's a good story. Here's a bad story. Hawaii judge blocks Trump's new travel ban. Take a look at the judge, and you'll know why we love judges so much. Hawaii judge blocks Trump's new travel ban. Now, you have to ask yourself why these liberal activist judges want more illegal aliens. Could it be because the base of support for the entire illegitimate Democrat Party comes from illegal aliens? Did you know that one out of five Americans right now are not citizens? Did you know that? Or immigrants? Did you, did you hear what I just said to you? Do you have any idea that the entire criminal Democrat party is built upon illegal alien, ille, an illegal alien base? It doesn't mean the only voters they have are illegal aliens, but one of their primary support groups are illegal aliens. A federal judge in Hawaii, that's an oxymoron, 
issued an order blocking major part of Trump's newest travel ban, suggesting it violated immigration law. The decision from U.S. District Judge Clown Derek Watson in Honolulu stops the administration's travel restrictions nationwide before they were scheduled to take effect Wednesday. Now, I want to ask you something. Did you elect this vermin? Did you elect this filth in a dirty cloak? Did you elect this dirty bum di District Judge Derek Watson? Did you elect this filth from Honolulu? Did you make him more powerful than the president? Let me ask you something. Do you want one dirty, stinking, rotten judge to have more power than the president? I don't. Watson's order issued in response to a lawsuit filed by the state of Hawaii, a Honolulu-based mosque, its imam, and two state residents who have relatives in the affected countries, stops the U.S. government from enforcing the new restrictions on travel from all of the nations listed except North Korea and Venezuela. Now, did you want a Honolulu-based mosque, its so-called imam, and two Muslim residents to have more power than the president? No. But guess what? They do. Because we have a perverted, sick system where one filthy judge in a dirty robe has more power than a president. And I say this. This Hawaii judge should be removed from office, meaning taken away from the bench. Do you know why? Because the stench from the bench is making me clench. I'm going to read you something from the cover of Trump's war. Uh, the fact of the matter is he promised a lot. And I said, well, if we get 40% of what he promised, then 30%, then 20%, then 10%. Right now we're at about, uh, uh, we're ranging between a 5 and a 6 percent of what he promised. So I wrote Trump's war soon after Trump was inaugurated. I'm not going to read it to you. Many of you can read it yourself. But I want you to hear what I wrote for the first paragraph on the book jacket of Trump's war. By the way, it became number one on the New York Times bestseller list, which is very important for you to know because I was not on any television shows and on no other, quote, conservative talk radio shows with the exception of Laura Ingram, who is absolutely the queen of all talk radio. All the others are too busy promoting themselves to ever promote Michael Savage, but I did very well without them. They'll soon find, soon find that they need me more than I need them. But the first paragraph of Trump's war begins like this, at least the book jacket. It says this. Listen carefully and tell me which he has delivered on. The wall, zero. Taxes, zero. Tariffs, zero. Deportations, yes, he is deporting. Obamacare, zero. Guns, thank God he hasn't touched them yet, but, but after the Vegas massacre, the president said, we'll revisit guns, so we don't know where he is on that. Military strength, he gets 100% on that. It's gone way up. Schools, he's left them alone. Give him 100% on that. Abortion, zero. He's done nothing to stop uh, Planned Parenthood. They haven't been put out of business yet. Religion, he hasn't touched that. I think that we give him a plus on that one. And I ask, what will the new president do? In this book, the man who many consider to be the determining factor in driving Trump over the finish line by motivating millions of undecideds and the deplorables who would have otherwise sat out the election provides a crucial first look at the early direction of the Trump presidency. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to read to you if you think I was deluded and fooled. Here is what the book promised. It said, The president faces relentless opposition from special interests in both parties, who stand to lose trillions if Trump's America First policies become the law of the land. Not only will Trump have to overcome progressive ideologues, neoconservative ventriloquists, hello, connected corporate interests, and a military-industrial complex bent on permanent war, Trump will also have to fight progressive beliefs, even he and his otherwise conservative appointees have unwittingly accepted that's a complicated sentence I'll read it again I predicted this I said Trump will also have to fight progressive beliefs even he and his otherwise conservative appointees have unwittingly accepted and I rest my case the fact of the matter is I'm not surprised that we've not gotten so much yet we've gotten some and I guess we could always do the default mechanism and say well it's better that Hillary wasn't elected, and it surely is, because to not just to have to not hear her lambast white males, lambast uh, America, is worth it to me. So on that level alone, I'm still hopeful that he will do the right thing. I don't know that he'll get a lot done, 
The fact of the matter is I'm not shocked. And I'll, say, I'll tell you something I wrote in my own journal when I was 18 years old, if you think I'm a neophyte to this business of politics. I've been political a very long time, but I've never gone into politics because I always felt liars were all thieves and liars and, uh, frankly, just actors. And I wrote in my journal when I was 18, when I really became aware of the whole structure, I said to myself, the American president, the president of the United States, whoever it may be, is really just a figurehead. The president is very much like the Queen of England. They ultimately have no power. All they do is have the power of public opinion. That's all they have. I wrote that when I was 18. Has anything really changed? I don't care who the president is. Do they really have ultimate power? Well, I, they do. They can spare you from a death sentence. They can condemn you to death. They can command a war. They can start a war. They can end a war. I get that. They are the most powerful people on earth. But at the end of the day, do you really think that they have power over the daily goings-on in our country? I think that they're truly just figureheads. So where does that leave us? Where does it leave a natural man like me when I realize once again that, no, I have not been duped. I just had an awful lot of hope and faith uh, that Donald Trump would make a big difference, and maybe eventually he will. But I personally feel we're going to get a tax increase, not a tax decrease. You can write that down. Oh, we'll have a tax overhaul for sure. But I can guarantee you my taxes are going to go up, not down. So where does it leave me? Where does it leave me? With my cynicism intact. This is the Savage Nation. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. As we come to the conclusion of the home of God, faith, and reason the Savage Nation, I want to read you a posting on my Twitter feed. It says, Proud to be an infidel. It was posted by Edward Elliott. And we're praying for you, Michael Savage. I hope you get national recognition from the national media. More people have to get your message. And he wrote this, Proud to be an infidel, he wrote. We stand in front of our women and children, not behind them. War isn't holy, but we'll fight one declared in us. We don't kill people who leave our belief system. We don't demand you have to worship our God. We don't like when you make fun or mock our God, but we won't kill you if you do. We don't have sex with children. We aren't commanded to lie. Freedom isn't the sin to us. We don't make good victims, and we outnumber you. Edward, thank you very much. We're in a war right now. I don't know if many people understand it, but I predicted it three books ago when I said that the American left has unified with the street thugs and with radical Islam to declare war upon America. Do you remember that? Remember, stop the coming civil war? The American left, meaning Antifa, meaning the ACLU, has unified with radical Islam, whether openly or covertly, to destroy our way of life. Now, throw into that mix the sewer pipe of Hollywood, which is melting down the morality of, of America, destroying the mind of America, weakening the heart of America, making people doubt the country. Now, throw into that mix the overpaid goons, in football who spit on the flag and then demand that you watch them. Now throw into that mix whatever you'd like in that cake of disaster. I don't know about you, but I get moved every time I hear the Star Spangled Banner. I'm still a, I'm still a, a high school, I'm still a, um, a Boy Scout. So what I'm going to do now as the show comes to an end in this long, hard day, it's been a hard day's night, let me tell you, is I'm going to play the Star Spangled Banner in order to spite the vermin who make $16 million a year and hate this country, and have the gall to go to England and salute the Queen and, and urinate on our way of life. How in the world can you still go to their games or turn those television sets on? I don't understand you. You have the power, all the power. We in the media live and die by ratings. Do you know that? So let's hear it. Those of you who are able to, will you please stand and put your hand over your heart? and thank you for listening to The Savage Nation.